everybody and welcome to today's class. Today we're going to be doing the magical writing book and in today's class we're going to study about narration. So as it's so magical I'll try my best to make it as fun as possible and hopefully you'll be able to have a good class today. So just remember you're going to need this wonderful book, this one here, and as you can see you just have to remember to try your best pause it when I say to pause it just try and fill in the blanks in the book usually in class time we'll do it more discussion based and talk about what kind of things we've had in our life and other stories that we can talk about ourselves but for today's class this week I'm just gonna make you write in here a couple of things now I don't have time to check everybody's writing so I'm gonna trust that you can do as much writing as you can so if you write a little bit or a lot, then that's okay. But just try and write as much as you can. Don't feel pressure. But the idea is write what you can do. And don't worry about how much you've actually written. Just try to make sure that the sentences are complete. Try to make sure that we can understand together the message that you're trying to give across. Because making the message right is the most important thing when we're doing narration. We're trying to make our stories. So, as it's magical, I'll try my best to make it fun. It may not be as you jam as last week, but hopefully you'll have a great time today. So everybody, this is it, and we're going to start today's class again. I'm sure if my face is here, you'll be a little bit off-putted by me sitting here smiling all the time. So, sometimes I'll be on the screen, sometimes I won't. But just try to listen carefully, and we'll try to go through it now. I said it's magical, so I'll try my best. We can't be sure if it'll work, but I'll try. Wingardium Leviosa. I guess I'm not going to Hogwarts, but I tried, so it's okay. Everybody, don't worry, you didn't get into Hogwarts, we're at Hoofs together. So this is for Changzhou, and this is for Pyeonghwaban. We have the same content, everybody just have a good try, don't worry too much, and just do your best. So that's it for today for me in here. And I'm just going to go on and try and do it step by step. So don't worry, don't be shy. And then at the end of the class, hopefully you'll have understood about what is narration. So that's it, and I'm about to start. So everybody, now that I'm not here on the screen distracting you, what we'll do is we'll go through narration now. The next points are in Korean, just so you can understand about what kind of things you should expect from this chapter to do with narration, how we'll teach it, and then also, you know, how we can get feedback and about how it'll work. Now, usually we'd make groups and we'd talk together. We can't do that because the first week is going to be online. So don't worry too much. Just try your best to write as much as you can. As I said at the very beginning in the intro, don't worry about your English level. Don't worry about making mistakes. Just try your best. As I always still try to get into Hogwarts, and I fail, maybe you'll be perfect at writing by the end of this. So hopefully everything will be cool. And if you have any questions, then remember, just talk to me anytime. Send me a message on eClass. Send me a message by Kakao Talk is the easiest or by email. Now, as I said, we can skip a few pages in this textbook. And the first 20 pages or 19 pages are not useful for us. But what we need to do is we need to go to page number 20, and that's when the book starts on narration, which is unit one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is narration. Now, there's two quotes on page number 20. The first one says, we're all stories in the end. And the second one, it says, tell me the facts and I'll learn. Tell me the truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. So just try to think about what are they trying to say to us? What is the point of narration? And the first one's the easiest. We're all stories in the end. Our life is a story. Everything that we do is a story. So the idea of this unit is to tell a story so that people can see what happened to us or what's been going on in our lives. Now, I always say talk to your partner. As this class is online today, the idea is just think about this picture. It's on page 21. Just think about it, and you can see it's two children playing together at the beach. 
So what you need to do is just try to think about your most memorable childhood moment, something that's happened to you in the past, something that you can remember with detail, a story that you can tell people. Now, after you've thought about that story, I usually say, talk to your partner, don't be shy, go, 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 and it'll all be okay. Now, what is narration? This is page number 22. So if you're very carefully following it, I'll always put the page number at the top. And this is kind of where the class starts today. So we're on page number 22. So narrative writing tells a story. That's the simplest way to remember. Narration is all about telling people action and events. They tell about what took place. And the idea is they show the event in time order. So when we start writing and talking about stories, we start at the beginning and then go in a logical order. And this is narration's key points. Talking about who was in the event, where it happened, when it happened, why it happened, how it happened. This is the key points of narration. So when do we use narration? Now, the most common time we use narration is in everyday life, talking about what has happened to us, telling our friends about something that's been going on in our lives. The next one is like blogging, texting, journaling, vlogging, I guess. We can cheat this way. Those are the major ways when we can use it. Now, what is narration about? What did we do in our daily life? Going through everything, explaining what happened in a time order. Things that have happened to us, things that are going on. Traveling, telling people about our experiences, about going away places, going and doing things. People are interested. They want to know about what's going on. Maybe at the moment because of coronavirus, <laughs> there's not much traveling. Next on people. We want to know about people telling stories about our friends and our families to each other. The next one is eating out, my favorite one. So going out, telling people about restaurants, what kind of atmosphere, the food, everything about the eating out experience. Some other kinds of narration is about fighting with our friends, family, some kind of issue or personal things that we have and we want to talk about them. And the other one is retelling other stories. So talking about TV programs, some things that people have told us in the past and telling them again. These are all factors and ways that we can use narration. So why do we need narration? Well, first of all, it's a good way and an important like thing that we have to practice and it's a special genre of writing, like storytelling. Next one, it enhances other genres of writing. It can provide supporting evidence for other paragraph or essay patterns. So it's a good way to practice and improve our writing. This is an example that people give uh, when we write an argument essay about alternative medicine, like different kinds of medicine, the essay will be more compelling if a personal anecdote, a story that we know, some kind of information or story that we can tell about them. If we can give our own examples, our personal stories, personal things that we know, then it will make it a better essay, more compelling. Now, we're going to turn on to page 23, and this is where the main parts of the strategies, how to write, like what are we looking for? And I went through them before a little bit. The first one is time order. Narration is all about the sequence of events. What comes first? What is second? What is third? What is fourth? We want to know the start to the end of the story in the morning. A nightmare awakened me with sweat on my forehead. After completing his studies, Jim walked out to the hiking trail close to his house for, uh, to refresh himself. So you can say that we have a time phrase or time order in the morning. So we have this phrase here. 
after completing his studies. After, so it's the time. Something happened first and second, like this. Next one, we have verb tense. So writers use verb tense to represent the action and help the readers understand when the action occurred, relating to other events in the story. So writers typically use past tense for a one-time event and the past progressive for continuous actions at a particular point in time. So I'll give you an example of both of them. She shouted and ran away from him instantly. So you can see that she shouted at and ran away from him instantly. Shouted and ran. Both past tense for a one-time event. Just shouted and ran and it was finished. Number two, my roommate was playing a mobile game when I walked into the room after school. So was playing. This is the past progressive. Some people say past continuous. But the idea is it's called the past progressive using was, the correct form of be, and then using verb plus ing. So I was playing, she was playing, my roommate was playing. This was continuous, was happening for some time. When I walked into the room, when some other action happened. So here is the simple past on here. Next one, we have action, action in narration. For action in narration, writers use active verbs, modifying phrases and clauses to show vivid action. He walked out hurriedly. John stood holding his breath. She was forced to shout with a stunning view spreading out in front of a waterfront. So the idea is we use active verbs, modifying phrases to show how beautiful or how exciting it was at that time. The last one is very simple. Keep it simple. Most people use short sentences. The idea is write short sentences, giving attention so they can feel the significance or the tension in the story. If you write a very long sentence, people will be confused. Too much information, TMI. The teacher caught us and we all froze. So we know it's a bad situation, some suspense. One night the boy pulled the trigger. Trigger is for the gun. One night the boy pulled the trigger. So it's like a dangerous, maybe he killed somebody. It's an action, something to get us into the story, making it seem very important. Now we're gonna go on to page 24 and this is when the practice starts. So usually in this textbook, they'll give you an infographic picture first and then on the next page, they're going to give you another example of the infographic, but actually written in story form. So before you go on to the next page, just look at the pictures. So you can see there's some pictures of a baby. You can see there's some information on here and you can see there's a title. So just looking at the images, just looking at the title, you can kind of guess the story. Now in this textbook, the title always gives away the story, like what's going to happen in there. So just look at that and you can see, so you can guess the story. Now the name is Eugene. Maybe you don't know this, but that's a boy's name. I guess it could be a girl's name if you wanted it to be. But the idea is the first one is Eugene. We're talking about Eugene. Now, if you turn to page number 25, I want you just to look at the title. So it says, the first day of my little one. We kind of know what the story is about. So I'll pause the video or you can pause the video and just think about what do you think the story is going to be about? So the first day of my little one. Well, it's going to be about his little one. 
That's what we call our babies. So my little one could be a pet. You're like, oh, my little one. Then it's your dog. But usually people use it for their baby. So we talk about the little thing, little one. So this is the little one. So it's going to be the first day of his baby. That's what we're going to see in this. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to turn over the page onto page number 26. There are questions about the text. I want you to answer the questions. So you're going to read the story and you're going to try to answer question number one, number two, number three, or number four, five and seven. So the first question is, what is the paragraph about? We already know what it's about because the title will give you the answer. Number two, it says, find the topic sentence and write it below. The topic sentence is telling you about the story. The, it's going to include some very simple points. The topic sentence will be near the beginning of a story always because it tells you what is the story about and what is the emotion, the controlling argument of this story. So the topic sentence is going to tell you what is it about. Number three, it says list all of the characters in the narration and explain the roles of each character in the story. So you're going to have to List who's in the story. Simple question. Number four. It says, how does the writer support the topic sentence? So how does he explain the story? What are the main event and the smaller events in the story? So there's going to be like three events. The main point of the story and then two or three smaller things that you can put in there. So just try your best to write them down. Number five. You should know this answer because it was on the previous slides. What tenses does the writer mainly use? So you're going to be there thinking about what tenses do they use? So there's two of them. Number six, you can skip. Number seven is your personal opinion. So do you think the infographic shows or represents the text effectively? Please write down your opinion about it. So what do you think about two things? Does it have a good title and text? Does it have good pictures? So for question number seven, you're going to write about the text, the title and the text in this, like on the infographic, on the poster. And then you're going to talk about the pictures. Are they clear? Can you see them easily? Does it look like the story's pictures? Now, at this time, I want you just to spend five minutes reading the story and answering the questions. After you've finished reading and doing it, I'm going to show the answers and go through it. So don't cheat. Remember, just try your best. If you make a mistake, no problem. It's not an issue. Hey, everyone, and we're back again. Hopefully, you've taken some time to go through it. And you haven't just cheated and waited for my answers, which I know is probably the easiest way. But what I want you to do is I just want you to try your best. If you make a mistake, you can change your answer. No problem. And it should be easy enough to complete. So let's go through the first one. So the first one, done. what was the paragraph about? As we said, it's in the title. So it's about the first day that Eugene was born. Number two. Find the topic sentence and write it below. Now, in this textbook, especially the topic sentences are always going to be the first sentence or at the start. So it could be the first or second sentence. But in narration, we need to know what is the story about. So the idea is we just write down at the beginning the topic sentence. So remember, the topic sentence is going to explain what is it about. And then it's also going to tell us the kind of feeling of the story, the emotion of the story. So it should be easy to find the topic sentence. And in this case, it's the very first sentence. I can never forget the overwhelmingly intense yet amazing day that my first son was born. 
So, what is the story about? The first day his son was born, there his first son was born, and the feelings and emotions, what is the controlling part of the story? Well, it's very overwhelming, intense. So there's lots of emotion, good emotion, bad emotion, amazing day. So we can see it was overwhelmingly intense, so it was really difficult and hard day, but it was an amazing day. So we know that this is the topic sentence. We know what's happening and we know the kind of tenseness of it all. So there we go. Number three. Uh, list all of the characters. So there's like doctors, there's nurses, there's Eugene, there's the writer. So there's many people in this story. If you've got a couple more, no problem. Next on. How does the writer support the topic sentence? So what are the main things? So the main event is the first day that Eugene is born. The smaller events, he was moved to the ICU because he was having problems. And the next one, Eugene could breathe alone. So you can see here that there's three things that you can write down. You might have written another one, maybe about the joy but we're talking about just the first day. So what happened is on the first day? Uh, look at the tenses of verbs used in the story. What do they use? So as I said, the writer uses past tense and uses past progressive. So remember, past progressive was verb ing. So it was checking. Past tense, there's many like forget, was, experienced anything with ed on the end is usually a past tense verb so you'll be able to figure those out kind of easily the next one we're on to is number six right so number six i said you can skip and so that's no problem and the last one do you think the infographic shows it well this is your opinion the infographic doesn't show the text to me effectively as it's a little too squashed together. So it's a little bit hard to see exactly which one is which one. It's not perfect, it's not super terrible, but for me it's just a little bit squashed together. But it does show the time order, it does explain the first day, like what's happening of him growing up, like the stages of Eugene growing up, like how it happens. Um, and for me the pictures are a little bit too small and hard to see, but that's because the book's really small. So it's not exactly the best pictures for this. It does relate to his first day, so the idea is we know that the last picture cannot be his first day. So, you know, the pictures could be a little bit better, but it's not terrible. So you can figure that one out. Now we're going to go on to the next part. And the next part is page 28. Now page 28, I'm going to move me over here, is just for you to write a little bit yourself. So think about your most memorable moment for a few minutes. Something that you're willing to write down in this book and you can just maybe share with people. Now, as I said, usually we do this as more of a discussion and talking together, but because you're at home, you can do this. So just remember, what is the topic of your story? The first part, page 28. What is the main story? Who are the people in your story? When and where did it happen? What happened? How or why did it happen? What did you learn from this event? Like, how did it finish? What kind of finishing point is there to this? I'll give you an example. Uh, what is the topic of your story? A panic attack while I was swimming. Next one. What is the main story? I almost drowned on the Great Barrier Reef. So I was really far away out in the ocean and there was a big problem. Who were the people in the story? I was swimming alone while my friends were on the beach. So they were just hanging out, just playing, and I'd swim maybe 500 meters. Next on where and when did it happen? It happened in the summer in Queensland, so that's in the northern part of Australia over on the east side. Next on what happened, how or why did it happen? I was swimming for a long time and I couldn't see the bottom. It was like really far away. But then suddenly I saw a shark underneath me and it really scared me. I'm swimming, so I don't know what kind of shark it is, and it's really far away, so I was just like, eh, somebody help me. But I'm maybe 500, 400 meters away, 
from the coast and from other people, so it was really scary. So I panicked and I swam back as quickly as possible because I was just really scared. So, what did I learn from this event? Don't swim in the ocean. I'm super scared now. <laughs> um, no, really, what did I learn from this event? Be careful. Don't swim too far. Don't think like I'm like, oh, you are the best swimmer. And the last one, be careful of all wildlife because you never know about what's going to happen and who's going to be there. So that's an example. So I just want you to write down your own parts in there. So just write down a couple of sentences for each one and then it'll all be perfect. Now the next part is what is an infographic? So if you look at page number 31, it gives the meaning of a dictionary. So it says a visual representation of data. An infographic is a collection of imagery, charts, text, minimal text. So you can understand the topic. So it's like a poster. It's a poster that's got information, just small amounts, so that we can understand some kind of story in this case. So there's an example right there. Now, on page number 31, it says questions about the infographic. What do you think about this infographic? Is it good? Is it bad? What do you think about this? So it's your choice to write down or to think about what you want about this. But the idea is we're going to have a look at the infographic first. What do you think? Does it look good? It says, the woman who I never forget. Okay, and then there's a picture here of a random tram. There's a picture of trees. How can I take a tram? I will teach you. It's very indifferent and it doesn't look very good. So you can see that there's issues. Does it demonstrate the text? Not really, right? It's quite bad. Now, if you turn over the page and you look carefully on page 32, you can see that they talk about finding mistakes or errors. So when you're writing about things, you might make a mistake. So how can we categorize the errors? How can we think about our mistake? Now, usually there's many kinds of error. The first one is called agreement. That's when something doesn't match. So it says many Europe countries has, but that's a mistake doesn't match with many Europe countries. The right one is have. The next one is the article. So you don't have to take tram. No, you need the article A. You don't have to take a tram. The next kind of mistake is capitalization. At the moment, the tram, the tram is capitalized right there. But it doesn't need to. It's not a name of a person. It's not something else. So at the moment, the tram started moving. Next up. Something is missing. So I didn't know how took a tram. So I didn't know how to take a tram. Before met her, before I met her, something is missing in the sentence. So you want to try to write down or try to find things that are missing. The next one, punctuation. You can see here there's a period or a full stop in British English here. Whereas here, the correct way should be a comma before somebody starts speaking in quotations. And the last one is spelling. I attempt to have pure will to other. No, I attempt to have pure will to others. So in the text itself, there's many kinds of errors. So you'd want to be trying to find those. Now, a tip for page number 33. We want to make sure that the sentence is clear. Clarity means clear. We can understand it. So we have to make sure that the subjects in the sentence and the verbs in the sentence match with each other. They agree with each other. The next tip is to always remember that we have to make sure that things are clear. So the cause of our university's failure at teaching students is not grasping the impact of family backgrounds on learning. Number two, our university has failed to teach students because it does not grasp how family backgrounds impact the way students learn. These two sentences on page 33 are very simple sentences, maybe or maybe not. You have to think which one is clearer? Which one do you think is easier to understand? why now 
For me, the first one, the cause of our university's failure at teaching students is not grasping the impact. Number two, our university has failed to teach students. Number two seems so much clearer. As you can see, number one, there's so much writing. It's all trying to be put in the first part of the sentence. Whereas number two is a lot clearer because we know the reason why it has failed. And we know why. Because it doesn't matter about the family's backgrounds for them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and do the exercise that's at the bottom of page 33. So I've got my textbook here. And you can see it easily. Let's hide my face. It's the best way. Oh, no, I'm back. Oh. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to remember. Always pause it. If you think you need to pause it, like take a break, no worries. But remember, the first one is the writing tip. You can see here we have a block of text. What I want you to do is I want you to, number one, analyze it. Number two, revise it. So look at the key points in the story. So read through the story and try to write down, analyze the key points. So what is happening in the story? So once upon a time, as a walk in the middle of the woods was occurring on the part of a little boy, the, bo uh, the bears stepping out from a giant tree took place which made him frightened. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down the key points for the story. So I'll give you a couple of minutes or a minute. Just pause the video and just write it down. Hey everyone, I'm over here now. Now the idea is what I want you to do is I want you to write down and analyze it and then revise it. That's on the other page. So we're going to analyze first the key points, what happened in the story. So, once upon a time, a little boy was walking in the middle of the woods. The bear was stepping out from the giant tree. The boy was frightened. This is paraphrasing, analyzing the story, writing it into shorter words, making sure that we can understand it. So you've analyzed it, the key points. So the next part is just making sure that you write it yourself. Try your best to write your own sentences in a shortened way in a more simpler way that we can understand this. So don't worry if you make a mistake, it's just being understood. Changing it just so that we can make it easier to understand. So here's an example. Uh, once upon a time, a little boy was walking in the middle of the woods. Suddenly a bear stepped out from a giant tree. The boy was frightened because the bear was big and awful. It doesn't say that, but we think, you know, he's a big bear, so he's made it this way. So, the final part of Unit 1 is the checklist, page number 35. And you have to remember, just very simply, and these are the key points, and this will be on the midterm test. So you want to make sure that you remember this. So page 35, there's some things that are important. Does the topic sentence express the topic of the narration? So when you write your first sentence, you have to make sure that the topic sentence, the first sentence tells the story and the emotion of that story. Does your topic sentence contain a controlling idea that is meaningful and interesting? So sure, when you write about a story, you don't want to make it boring, you want to make it interesting. So make sure that you use words that explain it clearly and very simply to other people. Next on, does the paragraph answer most of the following questions? So you want to know who, what, when, where, why, how. You're telling a story. So you want to make sure that people know about what's going on, giving the key details of the story. Do you use transitional expressions that help clarify the order? This just means, do you make your story with after, before, in the morning, in the afternoon? Do you use time phrases? Do you explain things to people so that they can see the order of what is happening in there? And the last one, do you include details to make it interesting? So we need to know like who's in the story. We don't, a friend, who's a friend? Say your best friend. Oh, unless you're an Asa like me, 
y y yes. Try to think of a friend's name. Anybody. You can lie. You'd be like, oh, Scott. You'd be like, Ryan. Anybody can be your friend, right? Maybe Rap Monster is your friend. Maybe you have a singer who you really love. But make sure you put down people's names. Make it personal. Make them really interested in the story. And that's it. And that's the first unit done. Hopefully it was easier to listen to. Usually in class time I don't go into as much detail. But you have to do the first week online. So hopefully this is easy. Hopefully you've understood about narration telling stories. Everybody have a lovely week. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you're very safe. Make sure that you enjoy your time at Hoofs and hopefully that we have a great class together. So everybody have a lovely day. I'll see you next week. Goodbye and half of today. So goodbye.